It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. And um, look, man, we don't got no fucking ads. We that Corona shit ads. real, bro. Yo. Real now I'm talk. ready to get off. Hey, now I'm ready to get off quarantine. Why? If we ain't got no ads. We gotta get back in these streets. <laughs> we gotta get back to work. <laughs> gotta start shaking his ass. God damn it. <laughs> um, we might as well start off with positively brilliant, positively uh, idi- uh, idiotic. That's not what it's called. Positively brilliant or what a fucking idiot. Yeah. Basically, it's a segment where we salute somebody for doing something brilliant this week, and we uh, chastise people for being fucking complete idiots. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what did you see brilliant this week, Schultzy? Yo, I don't know if it's true, but I think uh, Andrew Cuomo got pierced nipples. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see <laughs> Hold on You didn't see all those pictures On the internet Where he's in a white polo And he got the barbell nipple rings No He either has pierced nipples Or he has three nipples On each nipple I haven't gone down The Cuomo rabbit hole like that I know Cuomo was sweeping the nation And everybody's falling in love with him But I didn't I haven't hey. checked out his backstory Like that <laughs> Hey I'm deep I'm in the wormhole bro I got nothing but time on my hands. I haven't gone past him having dinner with his family when he was young. He said that when he was young, they used to have these big Italian dinners. Yeah. And he was saying that's something that um, people need to start doing during this time. Is have like big, big Italian big, dinners? Or big family dinners. Did he Did he share how many times they uh, their uncle or grandfather screamed the N-word at those dinner, dinners? No. no. He said it was a lot of them, though. Say what? He said it. He said it was a lot of them, but he never said anything about them screaming the N word. You think he said? You think he screams the N word? Not him, but grandfather, oh. Italian grandfather. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Italian. Most grandfathers, I would say, most grandfathers have said the N word. What do you think? Most grandfathers, yes. I don't know about Italians though. See, I don't know the relationship between um Italians and Black people. Like Y'all that. love each other and hate each other at the same time. Y'all want to be each other. Well, rappers love the mafia aspect of it, but then that's stereotypical to say that all Italians are like mafioso, though, right? No, not all Italians aren't mafioso, but all Italians are Italian. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so not every square is a rectangle, but every rectangle is a square, whatever that term is, the opposite. Yeah, but see, like, you know what's so crazy? Italians, they don't have the worst stereotypes, but they do have stereotypes. Because you think about Italians, you think, Spaghetti, pizza, like all of that. You know, they yeah. have their own distinct food. I wouldn't even say that's a stereotype. They specifically have their own distinct food. They love food. Right? They love and food. And then you think um, the mafia and you think Mario Brothers. Yo, son. <laughs> Yo, the Mario Brothers are really the least Italian Italians. Really? I mean, when have you known Italians to be plumbers? Yeah, they're Italian with Mexican jobs. They're Mexicans. Yes. Luigi is a super Italian name and he don't yeah. look Mexican. He's like, tall. he kind of looks like me in a lot of ways. But yeah. Mario, when was the last time you saw an Italian wear some overalls? Yo, be honest, Mario, bro. Well, Mario's more of a Hispanic name, but they say it Italian. Mario. It's a me, Mario. Mario. But Mario. it's more of a Hispanic Latino name. Yeah, the mushroom shit is weird too. I'm trying to think. But the plumbing, I don't know if Italians are plumbers like that. I'm be honest with you. Yeah. But we started this because you said Chris Cuomo got pierced earrings. Why is no, that brilliant? No, pierced nipples. Pierced nipples. Because I think he's letting everybody, like, he he knows what his nipples look like. Like, you know when okay. a girl got a nipple piercing and it pops through the shirt? Yeah. Right? They know it's popping through the shirt. They chose not to wear the bra. So if he's out there in the white polo, right, you already know white polos are almost a little bit see-through, right? And he got the mm-hmm. barbell in and it's poking through the shirt, I think he's letting him, I think he's just letting everybody know, yo, be yourself. Like, I'm a progressive guy. You know, he's he's trying to look more relatable. Yes, to to the majority of the population that has nipple piercings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, nipple piercings are a relatable thing because whether you have them or not, you know somebody who got them. Do you know anybody with nipple piercings? Yes, you know any strippers you see with nipple piercings? Yes, or just women, or just women in general? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. think oh, about, about men? The, yeah, what? Go. Oh, yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know no men with nipple piercings. You don't know any men with nipple piercings? No, 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 no. I personally don't. I'm not saying that they don't exist. I just don't know any. 
Hold on one second. We got to stop down. Hold on one second. We just got a, some sort of, uh, was it Zoom's failure? Oh, and Taylor's trying to produce. What happened? So she's so so she 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 stops screaming. She stops sharing her screen so she can show us Andrew Cuomo's nipples. And, Yo, and Taylor, you is- just freaked us all out. Just take. We got this, Taylor. <laughs> hey, Taylor, you Google those nipples by yourself. Let me see. I want to see now. The headline says Andrew nipples piercings. Take what does it say? Andrew Cuomo's nipples piercings take us take Hold our on mind a off coronavirus. Are we still recording? We are? Okay, good. But, hey, Taylor, remember, whatever is on your screen, we are recording on our end where we're recording all this. So you can't leave Sharla. Don't get Sharla off the screen. He's not on the screen. I see y'all right here. Taylor, what I want you to do is take your computer and put it in a different room and lock it in there, and then (laughs) you go watch some Ozark. Okay? That's what I want you to do, because right now we're looking at Andrew Cuomo's nipples, okay? Uh, I want you to put it back on Charlotte. All of a sudden, Taylor want to be a visual producer. She wants there to, we go. She wants to pull up now we're back on Charlotte. Shit. Now, whatever this is, you leave it there. Don't touch your computer ever again, all right? <laughs> Listen, I want to give a uh, what a fucking idiot. Well, first of all, we can stay on the Positively Brilliant real quick. I want to say uh, it is absolutely amazing to me how Andrew Cuomo in a couple of weeks has become uh, a media darling. This really, 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 really shows you how much lack of leadership is on the Democratic side. The Democratic presidential candidate should be fucking ashamed of themselves. I've been saying this for the past two or three weeks, but nobody listens to me because I got a fucking lisp. Mm. I've been saying <laughs> that they need to be offering counter-programming to fucking Donald Trump every day. Every day that Donald Trump was on doing those press conferences, Joe Biden should have been pulling up his fucking webcam at home and fucking just talk to the American people. That's literally all Chris Cuomo was doing. Don't get me wrong, Chris Cuomo's a governor, so he's an executive, but he's still just up there providing comfort yes. to New York City and in the process to the fucking nation. That, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And he has become a media darling, so much so that people are saying maybe he should run for fucking president. I told you. Know you. You, you know why? Because Joe Biden doesn't look like a fucking leader. And I know what this all boils down to. Nipple rings. Nope. What? Joe Biden's in his fucking house quarantined. And he doesn't have anybody to help him work none of this shit. Charlemagne. He don't know how to do Zoom. Charlemagne. He don't know how to, he don't know how to FaceTime. He can't connect with people. <laughs> Charlemagne, Joe Biden has been dead for six years. We all know this. <laughs> okay. It's weekend at Biden's. They are propping that man up. Shout out to Simone Sanders. Y'all saw also how Simone bodied that person that went after Biden, right? Yeah, yeah, Simone yeah. Simone has yeah, been yeah. carrying around Joe Biden for the last, whatever, six months or however long he's been campaigning. This is a senile man. He doesn't know what Not the bad. fuck is going on. He doesn't know what year it is right now. He doesn't know what quarantine is. He it's thinks bad, it's a bro. drink that tastes like chocolate milk. He has no know, clue he, what the fuck it is. He has no clue what's going on. He's like quarantine. Yeah, I see him. Quarantine is the DJ on Jimmy Fallon. He's with that group. <laughs> he's he's with that, that that band, that band, the plants. Honey, the can plants. you get me a cup of quarantine? <laughs> I just need a little, a little something sweet before we go to bed. This shit is bad, bro. This shit is really bad, man. And 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 it's not it's not gonna get any better because if the fight comes down to Biden and Trump, which it, which it probably will be. Mm. A lot of it isn't, isn't going to be based on, um, you know, the, the broader picture, right? Because mm. because before coronavirus, they could talk about, you know, climate change and, you know, gun control, things like that, right? They could, they could take Trump to task on things like that. Yeah. Now, all of that shit seems this big because uh, all people are going to care about is this one moment right here yeah. and how Donald Trump responded to the coronavirus shit and how he put $2 trillion into the ecosystem and how motherfuckers got checks. So now all they can do is, you know, point the finger at Donald Trump and say Donald Trump looks completely insane and he's incompetent, but you really want Joe Biden (laughs) to be the guy pointing the finger, calling somebody insane and incompetent? Yeah, like what, what would Biden really have done? Like what would Biden have done if he was in power right now? I think the only thing Biden would have done better is uh not not re- not not respond quicker. And what I mean by not respond, I don't mean respond to the actual pandemic. I mean Biden I don't think would have been front and center so early talking 
about this pandemic. I think he would have the way you the way you see Trump now putting the experts out there first. The doctor, the other guy that's become a star, Doctor Fauci. Fauci. Fauci, and yeah. then it's um the woman too. I can't remember the woman's name, but he's always moving out of the way and letting them talk now. Yeah. I think Joe Biden would have done that from the beginning. Mm. Therefore, therefore, Joe Biden wouldn't have took so much heat because Joe Biden wouldn't have jumped out there and said, oh, it's a hoax. Yeah. You know, we got it under control. Joe Biden would have just let the experts speak. But I think that you, this is just one of those things, man, that you can't even really put the blame on any person. Like, this is just something that's unprecedented. America's never seen this. This is out of fucking control. We've never seen this before. Dude, and it's about to get crazier, man. I was uh, I was talking to a doctor last night, and I actually can't say his name because they're legally not allowed to share what's happening in the hospitals, right? Mm -hmm. They can get in trouble. They can get like, I don't know if about disbarred, but they can get you know, punished in some way. And um, he basically said this, here's the problem, right? Right now, they're handling the capacity, at least in New York, pretty well. But here's the problem. It's going to continue to go up as the virus spreads. And then the big issue is going to happen when all the healthcare workers get it as well. So healthcare workers are there. They're in contact with these people. The little masks and shit ain't going to do nothing. They're going to get the virus as well. So then they can't be in the hospital because they could just share it with the other people. So they have to go home. So you're going to lose 10%, 20%, 30% of your you health care You got healthcare officials quitting now. They got, they're quitting now because, you know, they're not properly prepared because, uh, and this can go into the what a fucking idiot segment, right. goddamn Donald Trump sent 17.5 tons of PPE to China back in fucking February. What is PPE? Equipment, masks, gowns, all, all PPE is personal. I think it's personal. I don't know what the other P stands for, but I know the E stands for huh. fucking equipment. So it's the equipment that the doctors wear. It's like the fucking shit that protects them. It's the yeah. it's the hazmat suits. That's why you see the nurses in the fucking hospitals wearing trash bags and shit because yeah. they don't have the proper equipment. Yeah. And back in February, when the uh, the the World Health Organization told everybody that you know this pandemic is probably going to hit. And, and, and um, America didn't have the resources to deal with it. Right. Right. Even though Donald Trump had that information, he sent 17.5 tons of personal equipment, respirators too, to fucking China. Mr. America first. That's a fact. Why did he send it to China? What was the issue over there? What do you mean? <laughs> China got hit crazy. Oh, he sent it during the coronavirus? That was February. Hey. Like, yes, like February 15th. He sent all the equipment over to China. So now you got everybody. That's arrogance, though. That's just straight up arrogance. That's just straight up thinking nothing like that could ever happen in, in America. America's got this invisible force field around it that protects us from shit like this. He never thought it would happen, and it motherfucking happened. Question. Now you got those, now you got those healthcare workers and healthcare officials in fucking hospitals unprotected. I'm and that's why they're quitting. And I don't blame them either. Yeah. I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here. Is it possible that a, uh, you know, Fauci or one of these guys advised Trump and said, hey, if we stop the virus in China, there's a way better chance of it not spreading at the same speed to these other countries. So why don't we throw equipment to them now so they can control it before it spreads around the world? Maybe. Is that a possibility? Maybe. Because, I mean, you know, Trump did, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he stopped all travel Um from China and into China, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Oh, he stopped all he stopped all travel I mean, do from you China need into to America. Stop so maybe. Are there huh? really people that are going to China right now? Like I'm almost like, just let them go. If you're willing to go to fucking China, if you're willing to fly into Wuhan for the weekend, I'm totally fine with you getting coronavirus. I don't think people knew, bro. Corona didn't have the marketing it had now, bro. I'm Corona's saying slapping now. now. I'm saying oh, now. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right like now. People you're like, we're idiot. stopping flying right now. It's like you don't even need to do that. We're not gonna go. I mean, you can say the same for New York, too, though. Yo, but it's like when I hear people say, like, yo, you're not welcome in our hood. It's like, I'm not going. Yeah, it's dangerous. But you, could say the same, you could say the same for New York. What you mean? I, w I wouldn't come to New York right now. Nobody's coming to New York. I walk down the streets. It's empty, bro. Nobody's it here. Be. Nobody's <laughs> it here, be. bro. And you know what? Crazy. Will Smith was making a big deal about I Am Legend. Like it was, you know, he was suffering out there with nobody around. He must have not been a New Yorker because it is amazing. It's beautiful to walk down the street to have nobody there. Me and my girl went for a jog this morning. Nobody there. Absolutely nothing going on, dude. Could you fucking spoiled Americans stop jogging? Can Why? We just, no, seriously, seriously. Is it possible for Americans to absolutely just stay home for two weeks? Charlamagne, your black privilege is showing right now, okay? 
White people need to work on our speed. It's not natural. It's something that we have to work on every <laughs> single day to maintain. We cannot take two weeks off in a quarantine or we'll slow down to molasses. I'm telling you, listen, we really, all we need is two weeks. Mm -hmm. If everybody just stays home for two weeks, right now more than 80% of the country has a stay at home order. Yeah. That don't mean shit. Fuck the order, bro. Yo. It got to be a stay at home mandate. But this stay is your ass home. Are you getting locked up? Are you motherfucking uh, going to get a big fine? We're going to put you in the same cell with Harvey Weinstein. Like <laughs> you got to fucking st just stay home for two weeks. Can, yeah. Two weeks. Kill us, bro. Say what? With two weeks. Kill us. Bro. It's so it's you know what? I hear you. You're 100 percent right. Here's the problem is that motherfuckers live in shitty homes, man. It's easy when, like, all these celebrities and stuff in their mansions are going, stay at home, let's sing a song together, let's do all this shit. It's like, shut the fuck up. There are people <laughs> sharing a studio apartment with five other family members. Do you know what I mean? They got to get out. They got to fucking get out, they man. They got to get out. Like, bro, no, you ever really, going, that, that makes sense. You ever go to Harlem? Or the, you go fuck Harlem, Brooklyn, any neighborhood, right? And people just hang out on the stoop downstairs from their apartment for no reason. They just hang out on the stoop. They got to get out. They got to get out. Yeah, you in that one bedroom apartment. That shit tight, bro. Bro, New York is different. So I'm tired of people in LA telling us what to do and how to quarantine. We cannot quarantine. We'll kill yeah, each other yeah. if we quarantine, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me quarantine um, in your apartment. Let me quarantine in your house, in your mansion. I'd love to. That's the thing they uh, never do, right? They never go, well, just come on over. We'll take some people in. Yeah, I saw people mad at um David, uh, David Geffen. Because David Geffen, you know... Posted a picture from his goddamn yacht in the middle oh, of the I fucking ocean somewhere, I hate it, and bro. he was like, he was like, "Look, stay in the house and stay home, whatever, whatever." I, I'm gonna be honest with you: you can't be mad at David Geffen, and the reason you can't be mad at David Geffen is because David David Geffen played, you know, with the, with the cards he was dealt. Dog. And if that's his life, if he's acting his wage and his wage is on the middle of a boat in the fucking ocean, let him live his fucking life. Not everybody got to give advice, bro. It's like. Not Always everybody got to give it, but like now I completely understand. Like I've had, I've had a lot of comments as we've been doing this show, right? I've had a lot of comments and there's been a lot of people that are, that are of color going, Hey Schultz, you don't understand what it's like to be a person of color. So you might not understand what it's like to be in this situation, right? You'll react. And that's, I completely understand that now that I hear celebrities giving advice during the pandemic. Right. Mm. I completely understand because you don't understand when you're a celeb, you don't understand what a regular person got to go through in this shit. They're still human, though. No, they're not. I get what you I get what you say. No, they're not. And we should we should literally charge their fucking yachts when they show up back. If, if a celeb on a yacht gives any advice on how to handle a pandemic, the second their yacht comes back to the port, we should charge it and raid it and throw them off the back of it. No, nah, don't say that. Yes. Why? 100 percent. 100 percent. But you but, but, but you, you do know you're talking about yourself, right? Yeah, because you're gonna you're gonna continue to grow and gonna continue to evolve in this game. So people shouldn't listen to you I'm because you're successful. No, 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 no. They shouldn't listen to certain things. Like I'm not gonna tell people how to quarantine given my situation. But all David Geffen said was stay home. He don't gotta say it just, that. It just so happened he that he showed home. us his home. He, he and it happened yacht. to be a yacht. This motherfucker couldn't stay home. Literally, he couldn't. He was like, I need to be on the open water. Suck my dick. Been, no, by the way, those yachts like that, those are homes, bro. That, yeah, your home away from home on the water. That's easy to go on that home. And then you pull up to another home. There's all these fucking homes. What do you homes. think the Ark was? Say again? The Ark was just a yacht, bro. Son, it was. It was a zoo. What do you yacht. think the Ark was? That was the first Disney cruise. <laughs> Real talk, bro. And yo, think about it. How is it even difficult to get people on the yacht? Like, all you have to say is, yo, there's giraffes. Your kid's going to love it. Like, just, bro, just come that's on the yacht. Saying. That's what I'm saying. Y'all shaming David Geffen. You got to shame Noah too, bro. I think Noah people, just built, the only difference between Noah and David Geffen is Noah built his goddamn yacht from scratch. He did build it from scratch and David he Geffen had Mexicans do it. That's it. And was out in them, out in that goddamn sea with all the animals, having a good motherfucking time. Do you think he was having a good time? Do you think he was just scooping up elephant shit the entire time? No, nah, I think he was having a ball. Because you got to think about it, right? If he, if Noah was anything like me, bro, right? was Noah Listen. the first Tiger King? <laughs> Listen, you know how I know Ti Noah was having a good time because yeah. if Noah was anything like me, yeah, he likes to be right. 
And that's bro, that's a big W, bro. No, the no the Noah, what Noah was telling them motherfuckers was a big W. Just think about the heat he caught for that shit, bro. Yo, it's true. And think Whoa. about think about like how how excited he was every time it would rain and how disappointed he was it wasn't the final one. Ooh, I don't you know, think no. I don't think it was raining at all though. I think it was a drought for a while. Oh, if, I'm not, if I remember the story correctly, it was a drought for a long time. Yeah, so he oh. started working. Everybody would walk up to him when he was building this shit. Like, yo, you fucking tripping. You know, whatever they say, you fucking. And look at this. Yeah. They probably was laughing at him. You know. I was about to say taking pictures, but they had no phone back then. But they were just calling people to come over and look at this stupid motherfucker Noah. You know what I'm saying? And then when this shit started raining and wouldn't stop, there was nothing better than Noah getting on that goddamn boat, that ark with two penguins. And as that door closing slowly, <laughs> and he's just looking at all the motherfuckers that, that, that didn't listen to him. Oh, man. Yeah. I know Noah felt like a king. Bro. He absolutely did. He brought his family on, though, right? Um, I don't fucking remember. I, I can't think so. believe he's the only one with a boat. That's another thing about that story. He didn't have a boat. Don't disrespect him. He had an he arc. Had an arc. But I can't believe he was the only one with a boat. Like there has to have been someone else with a boat that just was happened to be like canoeing that day. And then the water came and he was like, oh, it's lit. And then he survived. You know, the word yacht derives from the word arc. Keep going. Yeah, Ark was, a, I forgot what language it was, but Ark is a word that um, it's actually pronounced Yark. And um, by the time it got to fucking America, people didn't know how to pronounce Yark. So they said Yacht. Are you making this shit up, bro? It's brilliant idiots, baby. That's what we do. <laughs> it's brilliant idiots, That's it's brilliant, it's brilliant idiots, baby. That's Yo, what we fucking you never do. Said, you never said who your uh, positively uh, idiotic was. Oh, Positively I gave it to Trump. Brilliant. I want Trump. One was Trump for the fucking sending the shit to Florida. But no, also uh, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. He's also a, a pastor in Florida, man. Like, I believe in God uh -huh. so much, but I also believe that faith without works is dead. Right. So even though you can have all the faith in God in the world, you have to work to actually submit your will to God and do what it is God wants you to do. I don't believe in people who, like, constantly sin every single day and do things that they know they're not supposed to be doing every single day, but think they can just go to God and pray for repentance. God is going to cover me. I just think that's some bullshit. And that's what Rodney Brown essentially did because Rodney Brown um, was still having church service and he claimed that the power of prayer would make the coronavirus go away. Right. And he claims he did the same thing with the Zika outbreak. And he actually got arrested for um, unlawful assembly and violation of public health emergency rules. And I think that was the right call mm. because he's a fucking idiot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't bring thousands of people into a church at a time like this and then use God to say that it, to, to, to question them and say, hey, if you don't have if you have faith, you won't catch this disease. Question. <laughs> yes. Why do uh, religious people. You know how they're like, God will send you messages, right? Yeah. Why do why do religious people uh, seem to be so skeptical when God sends messages through the government? <laughs> right? Like, they'll they look believe, at a bush. they don't believe in government. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, they'll look at a burning bush or some shit and they'll be like, ooh, that's a message. You know what I mean? Or like, they'll see the, the you know, Virgin Mary in like their rice and beans and be like, oh, that's a Virgin Mary. But when the government's like, yo, stay home or you're going to die Word. And everybody else is going to die. They're like, that's definitely not a message. Why is that? Because they don't be they don't believe in government, number one, and they don't think that the government officials are submitting their will to God. They think that the government officials are relying on their own understanding and their own power. And I agree with you 100%. I believe in GOD, but I'm also going to listen to the CDC. Okay, Yo. and if the CDC tells me to social distance and the CDC tells me to stay the fuck home, I'm going to stay home. Yeah. It's just common sense. Like, like, it's, like that's why I said faith without works is dead. You have to work, you know, on protecting yourself during this crazy time. It's the same way about you wouldn't go raw in a woman if she told you she had herpes or HIV or AIDS. I mean, I wouldn't use a condom either. Really? I, if a girl says she has I mean, you AIDS. wouldn't sleep with her at all. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. would you would avoid it. Unless, of course, you got herpes too. Or you know, um, you've done your research to herpes and you know that you can like like I guess fuck between outbreaks. I you know what? I don't even really believe that. What, you don't believe in herpes? 
No, I believe in herpes. But oh. like the fuck between outbreaks thing, it just seems like something a guy would make up so he could still get pussy while he had herpes. You, you, you're not the moral of the story is you're not going to chance it. We're not risking it. Like if you got yeah, herpes, you got herpes. It. You know. Yes. I, and I don't think that that's that big a deal. Herpes? No, like not risking it. No, me neither. Like that's think about choice. it. We're not going outside right now, so we don't get coronavirus. And most of us ain't going to die from coronavirus, right? It's going to be two weeks where it sucks. Herpes, you have for the rest of your life. Herpes is way more devastating than coronavirus. In terms really? of like, yeah, you don't think so? In terms Her of like your sexual Her life. Herpes, herpes has, I don't think herpes has a mortality rate though. Like there's nobody, I've never heard anybody dying from herpes. I mean, your dick dies. Nah. Cause then who are you going to fuck? Just a bunch of other people who got herpes? Yes. Honestly, they might be the best at fucking. Yes, they got bro. herpes. First of all, you acting <laughs> like you don't have a lot to choose from. <laughs> yo, herpes. you might, yo, your, yo, your sex life might go through the roof once you get yes. herpes, bro. One in three, bro. And you could What's raw cause it's like, we already got herpes. Like. What are we worried about? What's that dating site where you can remain anonymous? Where you can go in there with a finster? Oh, um, Grinder. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I don't know which one it is, but it's one of those dating sites where you can go on and the public doesn't know what's you. Uh huh. But the people you talk to know what's you. So yo, you create up a, a, a site like that, a forum like that for herpes. Yeah. And motherfucking, you prosper out here. One in three people got herpes, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. After this coronavirus shit is over, and I don't have herpes. Yeah. But I just feel like you're gonna get we it. We need to try to eradicate the stigma around herpes. The same way I'm you doing my part to eradicate the stigma around mental health in the black community. Somebody needs to do their part to eradicate the stigma around herpes. Yo, bro. let me tell you something, and I'm and I'm with you in this, but the only reason why we're okay with this is because we're not out there in the streets fucking girls that might have herpes. We're faithful. So we're doing the exact same thing that those celebs, we have a mansion full of no herpes at home to hang out. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Right? So we're doing the same thing those celebs on a yacht are doing right now. We're like, yo, herpes ain't that bad. Don't worry. Go out there. No stigma. Because we're not trying to fuck nobody got herpes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I get it. I get it. I get well, it. I just imagine think you were out there in those streets I still, bro, and you could bring that herpes back to your wife. Yeah, I think we. I think when it comes to STDs, though, we put herpes on too high a level just because it stays with you forever. Yes, you know what I mean. So but where, where do you see like, herpes? Where do you see herpes? If a girl's like, "Yo, I got herpes," but it's just one, you could put a little circle band aid on it. Would you still fuck? Well, I mean, people get it on their lip. That's not herpes. Yes, it is. It's, it's type A. It's called herpes, but it's not like that's manslaughter for herpes. Really. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's, like, it's not the same punishment. Really? Yeah, like it, you didn't really mean it. By the way, if you kiss me when you see that goddamn cold saw on my mouth. That's on you? That's on you, bro. Yeah, you had that's a choice. That's on you. You had a choice. If that's you're growing you're out your pussy choice. hair to cover your fucking herpes, that's different. You're disguising it. You're not giving Yo, can, me a choice. Can beards cover cold sores? No, I mean if you're growing out your pussy hair, but beards might be able to. No, I'm not, no, I'm just thinking about that. Can beards cover cold sores? Cold sores? Maybe. You never seen James Harden with a cold sore, bro? Say what? You never seen James Harden with a cold sore? Oh, my God. And I know all the pussy he's gotten in his life. He's encountered a herp or two. Oh, dude, he loves the strip club. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Do you think people are still hitting the strip club now during corona? Nah. Strip, well, you know what? Um, strip clubs in certain areas are still open, but nah, strip clubs are done. Strip clubs are not essential. Them shit is pretty much closed most most everywhere. How does it feel like knowing your job isn't essential? Don't you like really put things in perspective? I thought about that. Um, I, I did think about that. A lot of people who, well, first of all, I'm, I'm happy that I have an essential job, but I did think about people who probably thought their work was really, really important. Like who? Um, I was just thinking about this shit the other day, man. Activists. It was someplace that was closed. Oh, Fucking barbers and fucking people that run beauty salons, yo. Yeah, man. How it's the fuck rough. is that not essential? It's getting rough out there, bro. God damn. It's getting rough out and there. by the way, those are the people who could actually protect themselves the best, right? Because think about it. If I'm a barber, I go wash my hands, hot water. I put on the gloves. Mm -hmm. I put on a fucking mask. I should be able to cut some hair, right? Yeah, but then you'd be in contact with so many people and one of them is going to have corona be fucked up. I mean, I there's agree. certain people that still have the barber come to the crib. Duval's looking lined up throughout this quarantine. He is? Yeah, he has the barber come to the crib. 
No, nah, I called mine. That. I'm not gonna lie. I said, "Yo, you need to come back." He's in North Carolina, but I was like, "Bro, you need to come, dude. We need to stop nah, fucking around." That. I, I, I don't, don't want to do that because I don't want to put nobody at risk. And plus, my barber, salute to my guy Ty. Uh, he's he he lives in like the T neck Inglewood area, mm-hmm. and that's that's a pretty, that's a little hot spot from what I saw on the goddamn that's, news. That's a red zone. Yeah, that's a red zone. But it's cool, though. Listen, I like it. I, I think one of the most positively brilliant things, you know, that's happening right now is, like, people are really getting to see the real them. Ah. You know what I'm saying? We're getting, to see the, we're getting to see our real selves. It's not an illusion. You know what I mean? You look yes. at goddamn Puffy. Puffy did a fucking IG story the other day. That's Puff granddaddy, bro. <laughs> like, that, like, I'm talking about full head of white hair almost, full white beard. Yeah. I'm like, Wow. Like even Kevin Hart, before Kevin Hart had his barber come over and put the Beijing on his shit, same exact thing. You know what I mean? And I I, I appreciate that. Like me, I know for a fact I my shit look like Kevin Durant. Let me see your shit. Nah, nah. Come on, let's see it, bro. Expose nah, nah, it for nah, all nah. the brilliant idiot listeners right here. Let's see how nah, crazy nah, it is. Nah, it looks nah. fine. Your forehead looks okay. Forehead looks amazing, but my hairline is social distancing from my forehead. <laughs> so my hairline starts like right in the middle. Of my shit, like my hair, my hairline acts like my fucking forehead got corona for uh, real, bro. And like they have no come on, choice bro. but just to take be it in off. contact. Let's see. With... Nah, real quick, just... just for a second, dog. Come on, what are you worried about? You can't even see. Can you see? If you just, I take definitely the got the whole Kevin Durant off. shit going. I'll never tease Kevin Durant ever again, bro. Why? You really feel it? Right well, now? no, I will tease Kevin Durant. I'm gonna tell you why. My shit was bald for a mad long. Yeah. So the way my shit grows in is wild. It's my favorite unit Kevin, of time is a mad huh? long. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Durant has hair. All Kevin Durant got to do is brush his shit. My shit look like this because I don't have no fucking brushes in the house. You have three girls. You don't have a single brush? No, I'm talking about the the, the OG wooden, the wooden joint. Ew, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Not a brush like that women use. And my wife got the wooden brushes, but them shit too fucking hard. I need soft bristles, B. Yeah. <laughs> I told my wife, order me a soft bristle brush the other day, and she going to look at me and say, you just happy you got some fucking hair on your head. I need to see it, dude. Just take your fucking hoodie off, man. You're Charlemagne nah. the God, bro. Nah, bro. Most dangerous morning show in the world. No, I'm not ready Live to Live life that. dangerously right now. Take that hood off, okay? Expose Mm-mm. it. Nah, because I don't want it to I don't want it to herpes me on the internet, bro. What you mean? You think that they're gonna make fun of you on the internet? It'll be that meme that lives forever. You can never get away from it. You-, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You give them one little shot thinking it's just us. You know what I'm saying? And our brilliant idiots try. And next thing you know, 10 years from now, I'm still on the internet looking like that. Like, I, need I don't want to just, see I it, dude. I don't want to do that to I need to, how, how does it look, though? It looks like Kevin Durant with no fucking hairline, bro. It looks like Kevin Durant receding like a motherfucker. Don't give me a person. Give me an object. Like, does it look like someone dipped your head in sprinkles? You ever seen a worn tennis ball? You ever see, like, you ever, like, walk to a tennis court? Like, if you walk to a tennis court, like, just, like you know how you see, like, pieces of gum just chewed up in corners and shit? Yeah. Like, walk to a tennis court, you'll see an old tennis ball somewhere on that fucking court. Yeah, yeah. That's how my shit looks, It's bro. patchy? It's not patchy. It's just worn. It's worn? It looks worn. I got to see a little bit, dude. Just show a little bit. (laughs) Bro, come on. It's just a little bit. Just show a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Here it is. Hold on. I'm looking on the big TV. Okay. You got the side. I mean, I think you got hair, bro. Let's just see it. I I, I didn't say I didn't have hair. I'm just saying it looks like Kevin Durant. I got just Corona the curls, bro. The front. Let's just pull the I got thing. Corona curls. I got Corona curls. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Maybe it's actually better than you realize. Maybe you have body dysmorphia. Like, you know those nope. girls that nope. they think that's that they're not, fat, but they're really skinny? Maybe not gonna you actually have a full head of hair, nope. but you have- Whatever works for, you've, whatever works for Lizzo is not going to work for me, buddy. You're not going to gas me up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro. bro. Nope. Listen. Nope. Charlamagne. I just took a look. I think you're 100% that bitch, bro. Like, I think you really, <laughs> listen, I think you 100% that bitch, bro. Like, you, you might have a full head of hair and you don't know about it. You know what, though? I was getting those PRP treatments hey, from uh, Dr. Natasha hey. Sandy. But see, the thing was, I would never let my hair grow okay. to actually see if it was working. And now it's growing. I'm not going to lie. I had a couple ball spots right here. Them shit. That, uh, uh, 
I think you got to show us just for a, fr- next week. a fraction maybe, of a maybe. second, just for, so we could see the growth, man. So we could be on this journey with you because I remember you being completely bald. Now the hair is starting to grow in, right? Everything's starting to fill in. The high tide is coming. The return, the resurrection, if you will. We're coming up on Easter. The resurrection of Easter. Charlemagne, the God's hairline. I unstoppable. Got you on post-corona. I got you on Say what? The week of, the week of Easter. I'm gonna show you the. I'm gonna show oh, you the curl. Shit! The, the man knows how to make two weeks of content. That's what I'm talking about. He's a professional. The week of Easter. The week of Easter. My hairline shall rise. Really? Yes. The All right. Of, but no barber. No barber. Nothing. No you just barber, gotta let no the barber. hairline I'm gonna give be the it to you Just like this, baby. Fresh out the grave. Fresh out, Fresh out the grave, grave after seven days. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you, baby. Bring back that okay. thriller. How long was Jesus in the grave? I forgot. Three days. Three days. Three days. So fresh after three days. Why three? Out- These are the questions I have. Why three? I mean, if God could have risen him right away. Yeah, you got to build a little anticipation. You think? You got to build a little anticipation. Come on, that's a big deal. Resurrection of Christ, come on. I'm not going to pop back up the next day. You want to appreciate it. So you're saying God wasn't into, like, binging? Nah. He wanted you to wait a little for next episode. Appointment viewing, baby. <laughs> He's like, y'all going to come every Sunday, and I'm going to surprise you with a viewing. midweek drop. God is good at that, bro. It's the same thing with Noah. Like, nah, you're not just going to build this ark of me. I'm going to let you build this ark from scratch. We're going to get the real build up. So when you shit on these people, mm. you're going to appreciate it. God don't give you what you want. He gives you what you need. He gives you what you need. And what we need is that validation of shitting on people sometime, God damn it. And that's what Jesus did too, because Jesus told you I was coming back. Mm. He said, I told you I was, I'm, I told you that my God is a mighty, mighty God. Oh, you don't believe? Okay, watch this. And that's what they did. They killed Jesus, and Jesus had to show him. He had to told show you him. I wasn't playing. Now you got to watch your back forever. Imagine that. Imagine you kill me. Mm. And I tell you that my father is God. Mm. And when you kill me, I'm coming back for that ass, right? And then you do kill me, then I re- I return after three days mm-hmm. and don't even seek revenge. Mm. Now you got to watch your back forever. Do you think that there were a few people that were looking at Jesus after he came back and they were like, well, if, you're, if your dad's God, like he couldn't fill in your hands? Whoa. Do you think right. that there was a little skepticism? Okay. All right. Uh, I want to salute uh, everybody. Uh, was that too crazy? Pos- I want to... I want to salute the positively brilliant people uh, I think who have been using their power. Now. Okay, go. To fight this fight this week. Okay. Um, Jay-Z and Rihanna, they combined and and um, gave $2 million for coronavirus oh. relief. Huh? I said it's amazing. Yeah, salute to them. Um, salute to Quest Love. He's giving money to this food bank. The food bank is a is COVID nineteen NYC hub. Okay, I don't I donated some money to them because that's another thing I was sitting around doing. Right, I was like, you know, a lot of times we when we think about being productive, we think about um us. Yes, what can I be doing? Hundred percent to be productive. My mind always says, how can I be a blessing to other people. Yes. To me, that's a part of being productive as well. You know what I'm saying? So that's why everything that I'm doing in my life moving forward or even everything that I have going now is helping to empower other people. But when I was sitting around the other day, I was like, you know what? Let me look into some of these charities and see who I can uh, throw a little change to. Yeah, let's share with the people. What are you thinking? What is... uh... Yesterday, literally yesterday, um, and I should have did this a couple of weeks ago, but I, I forgot about it. But when we had uh, Andrew Yang on, he was talking about his program, the uh, the Moving Forward with Humanity, I mm-hmm. believe it's called. Yeah, that's what it's called. Moving Forward with Humanity. And um, they're, they're a, co- a coronavirus relief fund. And they actually give, you know, money to businesses that are shutting down, people that need it. Um, so I donated five grand to them. And the only reason I'm saying the number is because I actually said it on the air with Andrew Yang. So I did that yesterday right. and I donated money to the Quest Love's uh, food bank organization yesterday as well. Right. Because Qu- Quest Love's organization is providing, I don't know if that's his organization, but the company he's promoting is providing um, lunch for kids that aren't in school. And you know, that's really like one of their only meals of the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, 
I think it's great. I think it's great to like find the right thing to important uh, to help. There's a uh, there's a company that I was talking to a couple guys that I wanted to uh, kind of support what they're doing, and, and they're basically it's the hashtag is in my scrubs. They have a GoFundMe account as well. You can find it in my scrubs as well. And what they've basically done is uh, when I was talking to that doctor, a lot of the um, a lot of the hospitals are taking on more staff, right? Mm. And um, some of the hospitals just aren't feeding them appropriately. They don't have the ability to feed them appropriately. Some of these hospitals aren't paying the overtime that these uh, workers deserve. And uh, we thought it was really important. Well, this company thought it was really important. They asked me if I could talk about it on a different podcast, et cetera. And um, to make sure that like these health workers are getting good meals and they're eating as they're doing this is one thing that they shouldn't have to suffer through. So what they did is they partnered with um, like local delivery service options. Like right now they're doing a thing with DoorDash, but uh, currently they're doing something with uh, something serve, green serve. I'll get the exact one. But um, basically the idea is you work with local restaurants that are struggling. You get them, you raise money, we get them. All the proceeds or all the money, everything comes in, goes into these local restaurants, buys meals, and they're delivered to these local hospitals that are helping people. And it started in New York and New Jersey, and they want to branch out to San Francisco, uh, possibly uh, other cities in the country and uh, maybe other countries as well. But the whole idea is like, make sure you can get them food and not only them, they're looking at ways that they can get the families of the healthcare workers food as well. Because as these healthcare workers are at their job, 12, 14 hours a day, right? There's nobody for them to uh, maybe feed their family. They can't go grocery shopping. There are things that create tons of difficulty at home. So we're trying Word. to ease that a little bit. So uh, you could check that out, man. Uh, again, the hashtag is uh, in my scrubs and you can donate money there. And um, these are legit guys, man. And, and they're trying to do whatever they can to help out. And they're like, the worst is yet to come. It's going to get bad in the next couple of weeks because I think middle America, it's about to hit. And yeah, it's gonna hit them red stage, man. It's gonna hit. I don't know. That I was talking stage, to Chris bro. about that this week. I don't know what. what yes, yeah, salute to that website and uh, go to COVID. I want to give the website for Quest Loves Joint too. It's um, uh, COVID nineteen Food Hub NYC, and Andrew Yang is moving forward with humanity dot com. But now I, I absolutely agree with you. I do think it's gonna get worse. The only reason I don't think it's gonna hit the rural areas crazy is because people are so spread out there. Right not so dense like a New York City. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, uh, even when they talk about the spread in Louisiana, yo, we forget Mardi Gras was in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Mardi Gras was from like, I think January 6th to February 25th. And I saw them giving the mayor a lot of shit saying that, yo, she should have canceled it. I think it's the mayor of New Orleans. And she was like, how would I know to cancel it? And that's the truth. Back then, January, January 6th, I was I was still on vacation on January 6th. Right. I didn't get, I didn't get back in the States till January 9th. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you was in New Orleans and you was at Mardi Gras from January 6th to February 25th, you was living your life like it was golden. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You didn't think that it was a goddamn invisible enemy out there fucking us up. Yeah. What so do you I think? don't know if it'll necessarily run through rural areas the way it's doing a place like New York. Yeah, or even it, a, place like, a place like because... Louisiana. Yeah, there, there's less social interaction. There is less social interaction, but... Um, I think Wyoming got one case. Yeah, but I went to Wyoming. It, it, Wyoming oh, one death, like I think? I don't know. New York now. Like, there's just no... It's hard to see people. That's why everybody's so friendly when they see someone else, because they're like, finally, you know, you are isolated out there. And um, in any situation where you're isolated, it's going to be hard for shit to transfer. It's tricky, Absolutely. man. It's it's tricky. What do you think? Have you given any thought to, and maybe this is our deep dive, have you given any thought to life after Corona, how this is going to change things, how this is going to change the way we interact, the way we live? Like, what are the the greater repercussions of this beyond what we're experiencing now? Taylor, hit the fucking drop. This is the deep dive. Yeah. Yes. This is all I've been giving thought to. Um, life is not going back to normal because I believe shows that normal was an illusion. I don't believe normal. I don't believe, I don't believe what people call America, what people say is normal in America. I don't think America was ever normal because, right. you know, and, and, and Van was saying this and it made a lot of sense. Yo, it, they talk about how strong the economy was, but it took two weeks to bring the American economy to its knees. Right. We always knew that the healthcare system was shitty, but a lot of times we think about the healthcare system being shitty in regards to people not having health care. But no, America's actual health care system is fucked up. Yeah. 
It's not built for a pandemic. It's not built for something devastating to happen on a large scale. Like right now, America got his pants all the way down. What if a fucking terrorist attack happens right now? Yeah. What if it's a major earthquake in, in California? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, what if it's just some some crazy natural disaster that, you know, none of us can stop? What if that happens right fucking now? Bro, America would be, we already on its knees. America, that's like a, a gunshot to the head. So I don't think that we can, I, I think moving forward after this, we can never go back to what we think is normal because- How would a terrorist attack normal doesn't work. Now? Normal doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's too much of a gap between the haves and the have nots. And then even w- when, when it comes to the haves, it's this illusion of the healthcare system, right? Because you could be the richest person in the world. Yeah. If the hospitals are full, the hospitals are full, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You could yeah. be the richest person in the world. If the doctors are stretched thin, the doctors are stretched thin. Yeah. You, you, even if you got the money for the surgery, if you can't pay to get it, you know, whatever that surgery may be, what does it matter? Yeah. So it's just like, I just don't see how we ever go back to the way things were after this. Yeah, things always change. You know, I I think that you're going to see things always change. I agree with Van in that, like, things weren't normal. Like, we were living in luxury. We were living a a weird experience that was, you know, we just got comfortable with. We got entitled to. And I think this is like a this is a slap in the face of reality, which is like, this is the real world. Shit happens in the real world. The real world isn't, you can just start a business and it will work out. The real world isn't like, and you know, not to knock envy, but like the real world isn't, hey, life is so good. You just buy a house and then you flip it. And if you can't pay for it, you pay for it. Like, that's not the real world, right? Like the real world isn't guaranteeing that the economy is so good that you cannot fail. That's not the real world. The real world is every once in a while, an attack happens every once in a while. There's a pandemic, right. there's disease. That's the real world. Right. And I think that people start operating a little differently afterwards. I think that people I think we have to, I think um, you got to save money. Like there are so many people that for the first time in their entire life right now, they're going, shit, I can't live week to week. This could happen man. again. Bro, like, let me tell you something. I thank God. I don't have no vices, bro. I thank God that I've never been the guy that mm. would go out there and fucking lease a fucking phantom. I thank God that I'm not the guy that owes a fucking jeweler. I thank God that I don't care about designer taste and all that shit. Yep. Best thing that ever happened to me was I got money at a, at, at a much older age. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, And plus, I never had those expensive tastes anyway. That's not my style. Yep. I never got down like that. Yeah. So people laugh at me. I've always been the type of person. I like to see my, I like my money like I like my erections. I like Small? to just see them grow, oh, grow, okay. grow, yeah, grow, yeah. grow, 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 yeah. grow, right? So it's like, even when I was a kid and I used to be stacking money, I would just want to see that knot get bigger, bigger, yeah, bigger, Yeah, you want to look at bigger, it. Bigger. And that's how I think my, I look at my bank account. I just like to see them zero, 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 zero. When motherfuckers talk about saving for a rainy day, yeah. shit. I'm the motherfucker that saves for a goddamn rainy day, nigga. I know the arc. I know the arc is going to be needed at some point. For <laughs> real, man. It is, um, it is, a, it's a tricky thing. It's a very tricky thing because people, I guess, just assumed nothing bad could happen. Do you think that's America, what it was? American like, arrogance, bro. We are so fucking arrogant. We so fucking arrogant. We so spoiled. We look at what happens in third world countries. We even say that shit. Think about it. We would yeah. go certain places and be like, what is this, a fucking third world country? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like you yeah, would say yeah, that about yeah. certain places yeah. in America. That's how spoiled we fucking are. We yeah. see the hood. We see the ghetto. I've heard people say that. They see the hood. They see the ghetto. They're like, these people are living like they're in third world countries. Yeah. Uh, No, we're living like we're in fucking America. Yeah, that's you know how it funny? is for a majority of Americans. You know, it's funny. Once there's a uh, a global pandemic, right? Um, all of a sudden, the pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality goes out the window. Yes. You ever notice that, like, <laughs> yes. all these like right wing conservative, like libertarian guys, like all these guys who are like, "Hey, man, you just got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps." All of them are like, "Government, where are our masks? Government, where's our check? Government, the give where's us the, the vaccine." It's like, why don't you pull that vaccine up by the bootstrap? Why don't you pull some ass up by the bootstrap, right? That's right. It's the second you struggle, you want help. But you can't look at some, when you have tons of money, when you have tons of shit, you can't look at people who need, or most people can't look at people who need things and go, man, maybe they need my help. 
Yes. Right. It's like yes. we want to live this. We want to live this re- weird life where we've accomplished everything ourselves. It's so hard for people to share their accomplishments. Right. The whole pull yourself up by your bootstrap mentality is kind of bullshit. I like I like the way of living like that because I think you get the most out of yourself. But it's bullshit to go that you got here all by yourself. I like the I, I like the I like the idea of it, right? The idea of it is basically it inspires, saying it inspires behavior, it inspires activity. But yeah. anybody successful, if they're being honest with themselves, had a lot of help on the way. A now, lot now, don't of get help. me wrong. Initially, you do have to quote unquote pull yourself by the bootstraps. But once you do that, it's the same thing. When like Chris Rock used to talk about, if 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 you're on the side of the road sitting sitting in your car and the car's broken down, I people will keep passing you by. But when you get out and you start pushing the car, then people come to help. But and I that's would, what it, it's, it's the same mentality. Like if I if I pull myself by the bootstraps and I get to work, somebody eventually is going to come along and help me with this work. Yeah. But 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 in that situation, nobody goes. Well, how the fuck you even get a car? That's very true. You know what I'm saying, yeah, like, yeah, someone yeah, had yeah, to let. Yeah, you, did yeah, your yeah. uncle let you get the car? Right? Did your parents help you with it? People are always gonna help you along the way. So it's just a very like selfish and arrogant mentality to have that like you got all your success by yourself. Nobody fucking helped you. So you look at other people like, hey, why can't you do the thing I did? It's like, yeah, I, I've I did certain things quote unquote by myself in my career, but like my parents have always been supportive of me. My friends have been supportive of me. I hired incredibly talented people who helped. Like, you know, I do a podcast with a guy with incredible reach that gave me the but, ability but to put my shit in One key people. point to all, everything you're saying, Andrew, is perfectly true. Right. You're missing one key point though. You, at some point in your life, mm-hmm. decided to apply all that shit your parents had taught you, all that shit those mentors had taught you and mm-hmm. said, you know what? I know what I want to do. I'm going to go do it. And you actively pursued it. Yes. Which was, which was stand up. I think when it comes to that initial, you, you can have all the mentors in the world. You can have parents, you everybody have telling you what to do, how to do yeah. it. But yeah. you eventually got to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps yeah, yeah. and at least start. Yeah. And then once you start, people will come along, see what you're doing you're and right. help you the rest of the way. You're right. You're right. You have to start it. You have to start it, but other people will help. Absolutely. Other people will help. And you don't even have to ask them most of the time. So I guess Chris's analogy is the best in that way, because if you are starting and you are doing good work, other people will help you. But people are going to fucking help you, man. And I'm tired of these people acting like nobody helped them. People invested in your fucking company, all these bootstrap guys. People gave you money. People gave you opportunity. People gave you their platforms. Like, get the fuck out of here. I think we as Americans, we, well, definitely Americans, not even, I'm about to say humans, but no. The problem is we as Americans expect certain entities to help us is because because that's what they promise us in the Constitution. You know what I'm right. saying? Like 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 government is supposed to be there for the less fortunate. Government is supposed to be there for the poor and disenfranchised. Government is supposed to give you a hand it, up, give you a give you a helping I don't hand. Think it, I don't think it ever was in the initiation of the country. I think everybody I mean, they promise, was. They promised us that. What they promise them? I think they just promise they, basic liberties. They're like, "Hey, you got the right to be free, and then do whatever the fuck you want to do." Think about We're not that. Gonna you're, you're speaking from you're speaking from a real place of privilege, right? And I'm not even talking about race. I'm talking about just because of you know your your financial status. Right. Certain certain civil liberties that are allowed to you aren't allowed to somebody else. I'm talking about basic needs. Right. Basic necessities. Think about it. you got yo bro. We got homeless people in America. We got people in America who don't eat. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Who can't get clean water. Yeah. Those are just, ba- I'm talking about the, those are the bare Yo, minimum basic necessities. You bro. know what that is, bro? That's the cost of extremes. Mm. It's like anything, if you have an extreme of one thing, you will have the extreme of the other, right? Like you ever watch The Matrix? Like there's no Neo without Agent Smith. Mm. Right. The more powerful Neo got, the more powerful Agent Smith got. That whole yin and the yang thing is true. Right. Mm. So it's like that's what ha- that's what America is. We we take the cost of extreme wealth and extreme success as extreme poverty because we got some extreme poverty here, too. We got a lot of homeless motherfuckers. You know, and I know it's American poverty and people will be like, well, you don't know poverty in India. Sure, 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 sure. I get Shit. that. Go to Skid Row in L.A. They're living on they, but they got tents at least. Yeah, they got you right. They got tents at Who's least. See, think, about Ooh, think about that. They got tents at least. Yeah. Woof. Yeah. 
So that tent, all I'm, I'm saying all that to say that tent to somebody is a mansion, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You take that tent to some some other country that they would love to have that tent. Yeah. Just to want, protect them from the elements. Yo, what what kind of things do you think change? Like, what do you think the way that we and oh, by the way, we do have an ad. We do have an ad that we have to read. But um, do you think that um, do you think that things change in a way that we interact with each other? Like, like right now when I've seen people right, like socializing. Even my girl and I were running today. As we're running, this guy and his girl were walking down the street. As we run by, this guy shields his girl. From me and my girl as if we're carrying the corona. And I get it because he doesn't want his girl to get corona or he doesn't want to get it. But it's a weird way to socially interact with people and it creates an isolated culture, right? Nah, that it is not imagine, being, imagine, imagine me jogging as a black man in a hoodie. Son. <laughs> what, I mean, <laughs> yo, yo, the crazy part, true story. Jogging, hoodie on. If I see a white woman in front of me jogging. Yeah. I'm either going, I don't, I can't speed up to pass her. Yeah, yeah. Cause that might scare the fuck out of her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I either gotta stay, I gotta social distance. I'm talking about way before Corona. I gotta social distance way far back. Yeah. Or just go the other way. You know what you gotta do? You gotta start yelling help before she can. <laughs> so as you're coming up behind her, you gotta be like, help. And then she turns around, like, what's going on? You're like, help, help. You pass her and then you're good. <laughs> But you got to confuse her before she can yell help. You'd be like, help, help. What's that? Meat eaters. Because I'm sure she's vegan because she's a white woman. <laughs> so white women. <laughs> yo, all this vegan shit about to go out the window, bro. All oh, people this need shit. protein. Say again? People need protein right yo, now. All this, all the woke shit is quiet. You ever notice that now woke shit is real quiet? Like women got no problem being at home cooking. Women got bro. no problem talking about the man that they love and appreciate. All the woke you know shit's gone, huh? You know why I'm happy everybody's quiet? Because we should be at a time like this. You talk about what's going to change after this. Right now is not a time for anybody to be heard. And what I mean by that is this. Yeah. I have leaned into the uncertainty of it all. I've submitted my my will to God like I always do. Mm -hmm. To me, this is something that's bigger than man. This is bigger than government. This is a higher power operating like, like, like we can't even imagine, right? Right. So... I forgot what the fuck I was going to say. <laughs> that people don't care. Like, people need to not speak. People need to be silent. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes, right? So, we're always getting on our knees. <laughs> Yo, God shut you up, Praying to God. Bro. God said, cut God. that shit out, dog. Huh? <laughs> God said, cut that shit out, bro. Stop using yeah, my name for your bullshit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're always getting on our knees, praying to God, asking for God to hear us, hear us, hear us, right? Yeah. So imagine everybody on their knees right now praying, telling God all the bad things that are happening. Oh, I lost my job and this and that and this and that. Bro, God knows. God God is God is omnipresent, bro. He's omnis, omnis, what's the word? I don't know. Optimus Prime, bro. Yeah, he's, he's, omni he's an omnivore. <laughs> what's the word, man? You know the fucking word, he's man. Omnipresent. Omni but it's another word, omnipotent. Huh? Omnipotent. You're impotent. <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> What'd you say, Shos? Omnipotent. I don't, yeah, that word. Basically, yeah. he's all knowing. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So he know he knows what the problems are already. Yeah, he knows you this lost your job. This ain't about you, bro. This ain't about you. This is about you listening. <laughs> Yo, that's true. God never heard a single prayer and was like, word? He knows that you ain't surprising him. <laughs> word? There was an earthquake today? Holy shit. For real? <laughs> I got to address that earthquake, bro. Oh, is what? this corona, uh, coronavirus? Really? Oh, I don't know. I don't. God is like, I don't have CNN. <laughs> so why are we praying if he knows already? That shit is so dumb. God, yo, listen, God's sitting there like, let me tell you something. Not only do I do I have CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News, I know what those people are going to say before they get on there and say it. This is all written, baby. I wrote it. You don't even insult me. You're going to get on your knees and pray to me and tell me what's going on. Like, I ain't in the know. Now, I'm think aware. about it. Andrew, think about it. Yeah. As you get older... When these motherfuckers is telling you some shit that you don't know, you get a little insulted, don't you? Like, nigga, I'm hip. <laughs> like, I, know, I know what's hot in these motherfucking streets. Okay? I know what's going on. Don't insult me like that. Yo. I know it's a little baby and the baby. All right? <laughs> so imagine how God feels when you're telling him things that he already knows. He God already wants you to know. shut, so we we treat him to like shut he the fuck fell up off. and listen. Wow. Huh? We're treating him like he fell off. 
Word up, you treat ooh. like he's wearing baggy ooh. jeans. He got his hat like this. Like, come on, God, shit change out here, dog. Treating God like he fell off. Oh, you man. treating God like he not the hottest in the goddamn streets. Mm. You treating God like he not the goat. You treating God like he don't know when he's the architect of all that, sh- all this shit. Don't insult him like that, Yo. bro. It's literally like going into a restaurant or going into a fly place. And, and talking to the owner of the place like it's like he's the help. Mm. The owner would be like, yeah, I know what this is. I bought it. Yeah. I built it. This is mine. God wants you to listen right now. I'm not going to lie. It. I would still look at the owner like, all right, that's cool. But can I get some chicken tenders or something? Like, how, how are we going to figure this out? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it's cool. You own it, bro. bro you, it. you got it. You really got to know who you're talking to. Like, I remember I was on, when we was, uh, this was last Fall, we was at the uh, University of South Carolina football game. I forgot who they were playing. Maybe it was Clemson. I don't remember who they were. Yeah, it was Clemson. And as we were going down the elevator, a security guard, um, when we, we stopped at this floor, the security guard was trying to get make us come off right. to let like a coach or something ride. Right. This white woman in the elevator starts going off on him. Like, we not going no fucking way, yada, 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 this and that. She never hit him with the, do you know who I am? Right. Yeah. She just let him know I'm not going no fucking where you tell coach such and such that this is whatever her name was. Right. Yeah. Close the guy. They told him close the door. They close the door. Come to find out that woman was some woman who donates like mad money to the school. Yeah. It's like a building named after her family or some shit like that. I'm talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. So she wasn't trying to hear it. But that guy didn't know who he was talking to. That's how we treat God, bro. Yeah. You got to so, know who the fuck so you're you talking to, So are you saying that bro? we shouldn't even pray? No, we should pray, but we should pray for understanding. We should pray and we should pray God. Ah. We should say, God, we should say, God, whatever it is you're trying to tell us in this present moment, let me have the clarity to understand it. Yes. Let me have the, let me receive what it is you're trying to tell me. That's so, great. It's so, it's so many of us sitting around right now trying to tell God what it is we want him to hear that we're not keeping our ears opening enough open enough to listen to what it is he wants us to fucking hear. That's great. Pray for understanding. Because if you pray for something, God's like, I know you want that. But if you pray for understanding, then maybe he can help you figure out why these things are happening. That is if you believe and subscribe to God. Yeah, but but I I say it all the time. You know, you can have a good plan, but it may not be God's plan for you. Uh. So, bro, you might be, you might be, you might be undervaluing Yourself, meaning that you right. might be praying for something that's down here when what God really has for you is all the way up here. Ooh. Don't bid against yourself. So you're not you're not praying high enough. Don't, you don't know. I'm just saying, don't bid against yeah. yourself, King. Don't bid against yourself. Like you know, whatever you whatever it is you praying for, God is like, trust me, I know what I'm doing. I got this. I was looking at Bishop T D Jakes, right? Because I love Bishop T D Jakes and I love to go to my spiritual advisors. When stuff like this happens, this is how you know yeah. things are bad. Cause I saw Donald Trump talking about Franklin Graham yesterday, Billy Graham's son. Uh-huh. And he was like, I was on the phone with Franklin Graham for mad long. Yeah. Okay. So, and he said something about Jesus. So, Trump, so, so, so Trump really is feeling it right now. But Bishop T.D. Jake said, this is a great time to pray, plan, and prepare. Whatever is on the other side of this required complete global disruption. Many people are just waiting for normal to return, but disruptions come to liberate you from what was and to prepare you for what's next. There will be bankruptcies and billionaires born out of this experience. There will be bitter divorces and couples who fall back in love, resulting in stronger marriages that date back to these days. There will be churches that close down and circus to the hardships this brings and others that initiate massive revival with innovative ideas because Corona came to town. There will be leaders who win the hearts of their people for, by fighting for their best interests. And there will be others whose cowardice or narcissism will destroy the equilibrium of your organization. Mm. And he and, and he says a warm hand will reach out to the family or a bitter tongue will destroy it. Both will attribute to the virus. Which one will you be? Give that some thought as you look out the fence at a world shaking in unprecedented ways. That's Bishop T.D. Jakes. And I totally agree with him, man. Mm. I totally agree with him. You got to lean into the uncertainty of this, of this whole situation. I mean, that's and, all you got. You can't. And, and, and that, that's really all you got. This is totally out of, con- out of your control. And I think from this point forward, we should all live our life like that. You know what I'm saying? Like things are not really in our control 
the way that we think they are. We're well, here just, by the grace of somebody. Yeah, you just control the things you can. That's all I've always tried to do in my life. Control the things you can. And, and then and, not and you gotta have the wisdom to know the difference. Control. Say again. And you gotta have the wisdom to know the difference. That's that's the serenity prayer. Ooh. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I knew can't I control was, this, baby. I knew I was onto something. <laughs> Great deep dive. You wanna pay some bills? Cause I gotta pee. <laughs> yes. Nothing changed here, brilliant idiots listeners. Doesn't matter if we're in the studio or in the basement. Charlemagne has to go pee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, listen, we know what's happening to your homes. It's happening to all of our homes, okay? They're starting to get a little dirty, right? Maybe you don't have the cleaning lady coming through. Maybe you don't have a cleaning service coming through. You got to make sure that your house is spick and span during this quarantine because, frankly, you're going to be in it. You're going to be in it for that whole month. They're saying May now, shit, it might get longer. Who knows? Now, here's the problem. How is it that most cleaning products can make you feel so dirty? Between chemical formulas and plastic bottles, traditional cleaning products are a surprisingly messy business. Thank God we have Clean Cult. Clean Cult makes natural cleaners that actually clean with ingredients you can actually understand with packaging that's actually landfill free. It's greener and cleaner, guys. Instead of wondering what is your what is in your cleaning products, with Clean Cult, your kids and pets are safe with non-toxic coconut-based formulas. Clean Cult is an effective as leading brands of detergent get. Okay. So you get the same level of clean with none of the chemicals. Go to cleancult.com to get a customized starter kit and adjustable paper-based refill delivery service that fits the needs of your home and lifestyle. You can finally break up with plastic because Clean Cult is the only company to put soap in milk cartons. That's right. I have it. They send it to you. It's a very cool little box and they put in the soap in milk cartons and then they use gl uh, glass actually. They have these uh, sleek shatter resistant evergreen glass bottles. They reduce plastic waste. And it looks gorgeous on the countertop. So they give you the glass bottles. You can take it from the milk cartons, pour all the soaps that you need in. And Clean Cart's sustainable shipping system allows them to be carbon neutral. Okay? Get clean. Get green. This is how we keep the environment um, a little safer while we're at home. All right, you already see the environment coming back because we haven't been out there in the world. Well, let's make sure our environments are home are doing the exact same thing. You get started right now with Clean Cult, okay? You go to cleancult.com slash idiots. You're gonna get 25% off your first kit, but only until May 30th. Get 25% off now through May 30th at cleancult.com slash idiots. Cleancult.com slash idiots. Idiots. All right. Now we're back to the Yo, show. That, that's another thing too. I think the earth is uh, healing itself. What you said just now about, um, what'd you say? You said some shit. You said something about the air is cleaner. Something I mean, everything is cleaner. You're seeing animals come back to certain areas that weren't there for a while. Like, I mean, it's, that's what happens, man. When you remove people, the things around it are going to grow, but that's what happens when you remove any animal, right? Like you remove, uh, cows from a field, the grass is going to grow higher. Right. Like animals affect their ecosystem. It's not like human beings are this like horrible disease that is on planet Earth just destroying it. I mean, some of us are. No, the, we are. I, I would say the majority of human beings aren't destroying the Earth. I would say the majority of human beings are just pretty poor trying to survive. And then there's a select small group of human beings that are doing most of the destroying. That's what I that's what I assume. I, I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about last week, man. We're all we're the parasites of the Earth in a lot of ways because we don't care about anybody else we take fucking imminent imminent domain over whatever it is we we fucking wherever we plant our flag is where we plant our fucking flag it's kind of dope we don't care what was there before we don't even give a fuck about what's gonna be there after we just knock down these motherfucking trees you know what i'm saying and then you wonder why Diz is running all through your backyard motherfucker because they were here first simple as that so i think they? the earth is replenishing itself we're the, that's right. We really don't give a fuck about animals, man. Like No. <laughs> like, like you think those woods that get knocked down to make these houses and shit 
shit wasn't living there? Nah, shit was living there. We just do not give a flying fuck about not it, Not a man. flying like, fuck. Like, we Think about it, man. This earth used to be... The earth used to be so different that it had yeah. Sasquatch at one point, bro. It didn't have Sasquatch. Now it was a go. fucking You've been ten inside too long. foot You've been inside goddamn too long. primate living in the woods. No, it wasn't. Because America used to be a much different place. Then where are the skeletons for it? Why do we have skeletons of fucking dinosaurs? We don't have any Sasquatch skeletons? I don't know, bro. <laughs> Maybe something fed off the maybe I mean listen maybe something fed off the Sasquatch bones maybe Sasquatch bones are tasty as fuck that's possible maybe maybe it's once possible. them shit maybe people wait on them shit to die because that meat is tasty as a motherfucker so them animals being there dining let me ask you a question people haven't fucked for like a month right do you think once this quarantine is over. The dating sites explode and people want to like get with each other, start fucking each other. Or do you think that all the independent women realize how lonely they've been during the quarantine? They're like, fuck it. I need a man. Forget this whole life. You know, forget this. I need to, you know, sow my wild oats. I need to be back out there coupled up, buddied up because shit might happen like this. I think it's a little bit of both. I I bet you the dating sites are booming now. I haven't done any research to it, but I bet you the dating sites are booming now because motherfuckers is at home lonely. Yeah. So I bet you DMs is up like a motherfucker. Yeah. And and more importantly, I bet you DM replies are up like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Stop acting like you didn't see it. You got nothing to do. The women don't have nothing to do and they shooting their shots back. But I bet you those dating sites are popping right motherfucking now. Because people are happens? lonely. And this virtual shit, this might be the new shit, bro. Yeah. I hope not. Because I like interaction. I like human interaction. But yeah. this virtual shit like this, this might be really the new shit. Yeah. I mean, it's been the shit already, but I'm talking about like this might be it. People yeah. might be 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 satisfied with this level. Of, status, of, of communication. I hope not, man. I hope not either. I think we're I, community-based animals. We need to see each other. We need to, like, sing a song together. We just need to laugh together. We need to be around each other, man. That's why motherfuckers are risking it all to go to church. They just need to connect. We need to connect, Yeah, I said man. that. I mean, I, I, I said that, right? I'm like, my, my biggest fear about this whole shit is that we come out more distant from each other than ever before. Yeah. Meaning, like, even after... They say, okay, it's cool to hit the streets. We still not shaking hands. We still staying six feet away from each other. We still not hugging. We still not going to large group settings. You know, instead now, being that we have the options, like, yo, let's go on Zoom and do this meeting or let's go do that. You know what I mean? Like, I just hope that, I just hope that this doesn't pull us farther apart because we already were far apart. When do we shake hands again? You said what? When do we shake hands again? Six months, three months, 2022. Fuck out of here, bro. Safely 2022, bro. Fuck out of here. So 2022. You, you think we're not going to start dapping each other up until 2022? Like these are the little I'm a hugger, things. I'm bro. I'm a hugger. About. Say again. I'm a hugger anyway. No, you. I've never been into the handshake. Handshake is too risky, bro. When have you been hugging people? I'm a hugger. I hug all the time, bro. If you were a hugger, those guys would have definitely connected on that. Can I get a drop? Why? Because you would have been in for the hug and then they would have called nah, you. Nah, he you came up from behind me. Distancing. He came up from behind me. He won that prom pick. See that See that hug from behind is a little different, bro. <laughs> By the way, that's another thing that we need to motherfucking talk about, What's right? That? When it comes to social distancing, yeah. for people who got anxiety and that's already paranoid, bro. Yeah. I've been practicing social distancing. Yeah. So in this in this time that we're in right now, yeah. don't be walking up on me. Yeah. My wife made me risk my life to go to the grocery store on Sunday. And I went to the motherfucking grocery store and it was still people in there who wanted to take pictures. All white people, by the way. Let let, let, the, let the record show. Yeah. White people don't give a fuck, right? About Corona? Um, so, I'm, so I'm telling them to take, yeah. I'm telling them, okay, six feet away. Yeah. So it's probably a couple pictures floating around where I look like I'm photobombing somebody. Yeah. But I'm not. Yeah. Okay, that's that's just how I told him to take the picture. Got to show love to this woman named Veronica. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how old Veronica was. She looked kind of younger, but she came to me respectfully. She stayed in front of the grocery cart, and she said that she uh, really appreciates me and sta- and appreciates everything I stand for, and she stands for what I stand for. On a normal day, I would have shaken her hand and asked her what exactly it is she thinks I stand for. <laughs> Cause I would love to know what Veronica 
says she stands for as well yeah. that that I stand for. So I would just like to know that on a regular day, I would have had that conversation. Yeah. But it's very awkward, bro. Yeah. When you're dealing with anxiety and you at a time like this and you're in the grocery store and you're already thinking about all the worst that can happen. And then all of these people want to come talk to you. But Veronica, if you're listening, I don't know if you listen to the podcast or the breakfast club. I appreciate you um, for appreciating me. You now, do you want to get into some shit people, shit you won't care about next week? Yeah. Actually, um, I have a thought on shit, that, and I probably won't care about it next week, but I do have a thought. Okay. Where do you want to start then? Because I was going to start with Drake sharing the first photos of his son Adonis on Instagram over the weekend. That kid is violently white. But he, he, listen, here's the thing. I don't have an opinion on that kid. Well, you shouldn't. He's a kid. I, I, I think it's weird as fuck to watch all of these people. Like, I, cause I, when I woke up, I saw Drake's was trending and Adonis, and I didn't, I forgot his kid's name. I don't know why I thought his name was, I thought the kid's name was Mabed. And I, and then, then it dawned on me, like, oh yeah, Pusha did name the song Adonis or whatever the fuck it was. But it's like, I, um, I'm like, how do you have an opinion on somebody's child? Yeah, you Like, should. why do you give a fuck what somebody's child looks like? Like, people were doing these deep think pieces, like, when this kid's older, he's not going to be able to say the N-word. I'm like, is that really what's on your fucking mind? Well, he, like he, you're worried about whether or not this kid can sing his daddy's songs when he gets older. A hundred percent. No, no, that that is a reasonable thing to ask. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 there's really? no way he can say. Yeah, he looks like he should be in that Frozen movie. There's no way that he could be able to say the N word. You think he could say the N word? Drake can barely say the N word. No, nah, he definitely can't say the N word. If Drake was a bad rapper, you guys would be like, "Yo, chill." But the fact that he's nice, you're like, "All right." You've earned yeah, the but, N-word. But, but I, listen, I get all that. But my point is, who has time to come? Everyone to now. Everyone has right. time right. now. You're right. You're we're right. bored. We need anything. Weird. Dude, if this right. MJ documentary doesn't come weird. out, we're going to fucking off ourselves. They literally, you saw them move up the MJ doc? I loved it. Wait, you saw it already? No, no, no I'm saying I love that they moved it up. Oh, thank God. Okay, um... Here's here's something, and I, maybe I won't care about it next week, but like, uh, I was talking to um, uh, Mark, my boy Mark, comedian, who works with us, and uh, we were talking about porn, and I and I went to look at this girl who's a porn star, right? And I'm scrolling through porn. I haven't looked at porn. Good in probably, segue, because Drake's baby mom was a porn star. There we go. I haven't I haven't looked at porn for probably fucking years. Okay, uh, outside of us watching the old people porn. When is porn going to stop evolving? Because I don't might sound like a fucking old man right now, but it's already getting uncomfortable. Like everything was step brother. Everything was step mom. Everything is, it's just like getting closer and closer and closer to family. Right. And like, it wasn't like that when I was a kid. I'm not saying porn wasn't wild when I was a kid. It was wild, but it wasn't as taboo and things just get more and more taboo as time goes on. Just like basketball evolves, right? Just like when we were growing up, power forwards couldn't shoot threes. Now power forwards shoot threes, right? So it's like, if this is what this generation of kids is watching and thinks is normal, what the fuck will my kids be watching and think are normal? Nah, I think you look, nah, I think you digging too deep, brother. Porn, porn plays into your wildest fantasies. I've never right? fantasized about fucking my stepmom or my stepsister. You never had a hot stepmom or stepsister. Even if I did, bro. Because if you, you just never had a hot... No, that's not true. If you think about it, imagine you were born into... Imagine you were married into a family like the Brady Bunch. Or uh, imagine you were married into the Kardashian right. clan. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now I, all of a sudden you got these hot stepsisters or si sister-in-law, whatever the fuck you call them. All right. Shows you've been fantasizing about uh, Kylie for a long time. I'm over it, by the way. Oh, you're over it? Yeah. So who do you think is hot right now? My girlfriend. Oh, okay. All right. Well, imagine your girlfriend <laughs> was your fucking stepsister. Right? <laughs> okay. Imagine at, at, at your age right now, uh, Gray gets married. I don't know how the fuck that would work. Some, I don't know. What the fuck? How would that work? I don't know how you get a stepsister. I how do you get a stepsister? Your, your parents remarry. Okay. So at this age, your parents remarried, hypothetically, your sister, your stepsister is the girl that you think is the hottest girl in the world right now. Your girl. She's your stepsister. There's no blood involved, no nothing. You didn't grow up with her, nothing. I understand why it's not immoral. 
I do understand that. I'm not debating whether or not you can fuck your stepsister. Yes, I, I know you can fuck her, and that's that that is what it is. What I am debating is how we porn plays into the taboo, right? It plays into what is wrong. It's it plays into what you shouldn't do, right? It's like you naturally when you look at a girl, you're not like, I want five guys to come on her. You don't think that naturally, right? But eventually one guy comes on a girl and you're like, I guess that's not enough. I've been desensitized to one guy. Let's add two. Let's add three. Let's add 500. Like, when does it stop? I, I, I think really I, curious. I think it, just, when I think it all plays into stop, your fantasy. Bro. I think it's weird if you saw, if I saw a real mom fucking a son, I'd be like, okay, y'all going too far. Son, you know what I'm they saying? got pregnancy porn. That's not too far, bro. Some girls nah, eight months some pregnant. guys fantasize about pregnancy poom poom. Pregnancy poom poom is really good. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm saying I got three girls. I know. You want to see I a fuck I <laughs> have three girls I know. You want to see a girl who's pregnant getting fucked by someone who's not the father of the kid? Well, that's just disrespectful. First of all, I would if I'm the father, if I'm the father ay, ay, ay. of the baby that's in that woman's stomach, somebody yeah. getting killed, bro. You coming on my fucking fetus? The fuck is wrong with you? Bro. Like, that shit is disrespectful. I think women that do shit like that are disrespectful as fuck. It is disrespectful, but porn disrespectful. is disrespectful. You're not coming on a girl's face out of respect. But once again, right? that's playing into somebody's <laughs> fantasies. Say again? Like some, that's playing into people's fantasies. Some guys think that shit is sexy to come into a, come in a girl's face. Like, all porn does is play on every weird, kinky sexual desire right. you ever had. That's why you see a lot of S&M. Exactly. Step. Exactly. But those desires, it takes steps to get there, right? So it's like a, a, a culture that's never looked at porn, right? You just show two people making out and dry humping, they're going to lose their shit. They're going to be like, fuck, that's porn. Amazing. It's on. It's popping, right? But a culture like ours, who's been inundated with porn, right? And we've seen every different thing. Now you got to add tentacles in just to get us off. I'm well, honest, I haven't is, seen at what every point different you thing. stop? I haven't seen every different thing. I just got into OPP. Old people porn. That's it. I just got into that when Taylor showed us that shit a few weeks ago. And I haven't watched some in a while, but yeah. when I when I went down that old gray rabbit hole, I went down that old gray rabbit hole, god damn it. Yeah. Cuz I I've never seen that shit. I was like, "Oh shit, these old ladies be getting it." In. They do get it in. And I'm talking about oh, I'm talking about 70, 80 years old wrinkled as fuck, like, getting it in. Is that, and I was, was like, that was interesting to me. Is that why you want people to take coronavirus seriously so all the people that you watch in porn don't die? That's right. That's the I've only always liked older women, about. though. I've never, I don't like elderly, wild elderly older women. But I like, I've always liked older women. Older right. women. I think older women are beautiful. Like, I think, like, Patti LaBelle is beautiful to me. Stephanie Mills is beautiful to me. Angela Bassett is beautiful to me. Like these are beautiful 60 year old women, man. Yeah, I think incredibly women can gorgeous. Be beautiful and you don't want to watch them fuck. Excuse me? I think women can be beautiful and then you don't want to watch them fuck. But I'm just saying, like, I, I don't hey, know. Hey, listen, to each his own. I'm just saying, yeah. you, you have to recognize at a certain point in time, we're going to run out of things to put our dick in. Right? Like, we're going to run out of sexual moves. Like, you're putting two dicks Who in a butthole. Who the fuck are you, Joe Exotic, bro? You about to fuck a tiger? Yo, maybe, bro. What do you mean you run out of holes? What's wrong with the... There's no such thing as running out of holes. I like the holes that I put my dick in. That's what I'm saying. The less, the less that we inundate ourselves with these, like, weird porn things the more that we'll actually like what we have. It's like what we keep talking about. It's like, if you actually like who you are, you don't need all these other things to make you happy... Then yeah. you're going to be happy in a time during, you know, global pandemic. You're going to be happy when you're quarantined. If you don't need to buy fly shit to be happy, you'll be happy when you don't got shit. You oh, I can see, I got, what, I see, you know what, I, I see like, what you're saying. You and yeah, I got you, a you, nice you, nest egg, right? Right. So we yeah. are prepared for something like this because we don't buy flashy shit all the fucking time. You never see me with jewelry or chains or nothing like that. I buy, spend some money on sneakers. That's it. Maybe, you know, this studio I spend some money on, but I save up for a rainy day because I don't know what could happen. Like, but, and, but also I don't need the external shit to make me happy. I don't need people going, oh my God, you look so cool in that outfit. Now you're cool to me. I don't need that. Right. So what if the same thing applies to porn? What if I, I you think know, porn, I get what you're saying. I think porn, um, I think you can get to the point where it takes too much to get you off. Now we're talking. You know what I'm saying? Now like you don't want your you don't want your brain to go there. Now we're talking. Yeah, but that that cut, I mean, if you fucking sitting around watching porn all day, jacking off every fucking day, it probably does take you a little bit more to get hard. It you does. Know what I'm saying? It, it takes does. a little bit more than the average bear. It does. You get a nice little woody. 
Yeah. So then that's that's the issue. I get what you're saying. I just think that eventually we're gonna have to have a conversation and go, okay, we've done enough porn. Like that's that's enough. There's a limit. You to just the can't porn. do weirdo shit. Son, it's all weirdo shit now. There's nothing out there that's not weirdo shit. Here's an interesting question. Okay. If you're into barely legal porn, like you know they 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 put the fucking banner up, barely legal. They're marketing to people that want it to be illegal. Like by clicking on barely legal, yeah. you're basically admitting, "Hey, I'd rather you be illegal, but this is the legal way to go about things. Yeah, that's a weird banner. They might, it, should right? just, it should just be like, it should just say hot 18 year old. That's it. Why, why are you marketing the illegal aspect of it? It's yeah, so, like it should, clicking yeah. on that should make you feel weird. Yeah, they should just treat it like the Krispy Kreme light. It should just be like hot and fresh 18 year olds. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Barely legal sounds wild. Son. That's where porn is go. Like now, porn I think has if been you there click for a while, on barely legal, what we're if, you, dealing if you click on barely legal, you'd click on like you're suspicious, bro. 16, 17 years. You're, yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get you're what you're You're suspicious, saying. bro. Barely legal. You're, you're going for barely legal. All right. I get what you're saying. Okay, All right, shit, go. you won't care about next week. You saw Tiger King. I did. Yes. Did you like it? I loved it, man. I'm gonna talk to Doc Antle later today on uh, on the podcast. You think Joe Exotic or uh, uh, Jeff was fucking one of them tigers? No, I don't think they're having sex with the Tigers. Really? Yeah, why? You think that they have sex with the Tigers? Did you see when Kara was rubbing the Tigers' balls? Say again? To calm them down? Did you see when... The, what's her name? Kara? Carol? Carol? The did you crazy see when Carol was rubbing the husband? Tigers' balls to calm the Tiger down? No, she did that? Yeah, there's a scene where she's rubbing the Tigers' balls to calm the Tiger down. I didn't see that at all, but I know that that girl is 100% out of her fucking mind. You don't think it's weird to have that kind of relationship with animals, bro? Yeah, it's very weird to have the relationship with animals. You're missing something inside and you need an animal that's going to love you unconditionally and not judge you for your past you know, transgressions. I don't mind a dog or a cat. All but a whole animal tiger. people are weird, bro. If you are obsessed with animals, you got a little something missing in there, bro. It's it's I've never met a person obsessed with animals that I looked at and I was like, yep, they're OK. 100 percent OK. Nothing wrong with them. You know what else I, I found disturbing? Trauma, they man. said that it's more it's more tigers in captivity than it is tigers in the wild. Yes. That's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Like, let the tigers go, bro. Why you got why you fucking keeping tigers captive? Because society used to suck when tigers were just walking around. Where the fuck have you been with tigers are just walking around? Son, I haven't, but India was probably way worse when tigers were just walking around. And now that all the tigers are gone, people are like, oh, bet I could take a nice little walk. Everybody was sheltered never, at home when the tigers were around. Those tigers probably were never bothering no fucking body. You but tigers are probably just mind. like cats. You leave them alone, they leave you alone. Bullshit. Cats out of nowhere <laughs> just slap you in the face. Well, every now and then a tiger Jump. might do that. But why are you in a cat's face? Bro, we live in this amazing life where there's like no more animals around because we fucking killed them all. But before that, when animals were everywhere, shit sucked. It fucking For sucked. Who? Say again? For who? For people. I don't believe that. You don't believe that? Why do we have coronavirus right now? Because Chinese people can't fucking leave animals alone. They got to sell them at every goddamn market. I'll tell you why I don't believe that. Because if that was the case, then why do white people go out of their fucking way to be around the animals. Because white people are bored and they need purpose and identity. So they become an animal person or a vegan or one of these other things. They don't have an identity to tap into. They just need something Joe, to do. I think Joe, Joe Exotic fucked that tiger, bro. Joe Exotic absolutely had his dick in the Frosted Flakes box. He would only fuck the tiger if it was straight. He would fuck Tony the tiger, just not Tanya. He'd fuck Tony the tiger and he'd be like, that dick is great. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what if you make a cereal called Frosted Fucks with Joe Exotic on the front cover with his dick in Tony the Tiger? <laughs> I think I, th I can think of another word that you could name that cereal. <laughs> Man, those frosted cigarettes in London are, are good, aren't they? <laughs> those, those fucking... <laughs> Those frosted oh. cigarettes. <laughs> Those frosted cigarettes in London, man. Son, you guys Lord have coffee, mercy. Bro. Come on now. I was, that was a laughing cough. All that right. had nothing to do with goddamn Corona. Corona. 
Um, oh, you know what I wanted to go back to? I wanted to go back to Drake, right? Yeah. I got a theory about Drake. Talk to me. It's just me talking, Charlemagne the God. Uh, I was thinking about um, him sharing the first photos of his son Adonis, and I was like, why? You know what I'm saying? Because, I, I mean, listen, I don't knock anybody who shows their kids on social media. I choose not to do it simply because like, this world is fucking cruel. You know what I mean? And I know what pisses me off. Yeah. And that would absolutely piss me off. So I'm not going to ever subject myself to that. But I see Drake, you know, doing a lot of little things. Like, you know, he's, you know, he'll leak music. He'll put out music videos here and there. Like, he's got this dance song that, you know, he leaked to some dances. Some dancers did a dance to it. I saw academics posted. And, right. Um, I'm, 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 I'm thinking that either Drake, and I don't know what his label situation is right now, but I think he's either trying to start like a major bidding war because I find it interesting that none of these songs are coming out on streaming services. They're coming out on like YouTube. Or SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Um, you know, even the record, that's the dance record. I don't know where that came from. I just, I heard it was a leak, but I think he's, He's doing that for one of two reasons. Either he's starting a major, major, you know, bidding war for his services with one of these streaming services, whether mm. it's Apple, whether it's Spotify, who knows who it'll be. Um, and Drake will get top dollar from either one of them. Right. Uh, or I wonder if Drake is questioning his place in the culture. Ooh. Talk to me. About I wonder, that. I wonder, I wonder if he feels like his relevancy is slipping. Ooh. Which is which is not, by the way. But I'm just saying he's at a place where he's been in this game for 10 years. He's not the young, you know, white hot thing anymore. Right. He's just Drake. He's an entity unto himself, which is great. But I was thinking about when he came out at that Tyler the Creator show and, you know, they kind of booed him. They did boo him. Three, four years ago, that doesn't happen. I don't think for Drake at any venue. I think at Tyler's it would. Tyler's got such a specific specific niche uh, fan group that I think that they would. Maybe. It's possible. It's possible. But I just, you know, I just wonder like- They're like, you know, the, we're going to like what's not cool. Like we're going to make what's not cool, cool. And Drake is cool. So they reject yeah. whatever is mainstream cool. And that's where they find cool. So if golf is- cool they'll make sorry if golf is not cool they'll be like we like golf now let's make golf outfits you know I, wonder, I wonder if that bothered him in any way though i probably i wonder I if that bothered him and yeah. got into his head in any way shape or form because what because what i would tell drake is drake you're drake yeah. meaning that you're established you are right now one of the greatest hip-hop artists of all time right nobody can take that away from you you want to the greatest artists of all time nobody can take that away from you your 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 place in the game you know, from here on out depends on you. Like at this point to me, Drake is just playing for legacy. Mm, right? Yeah. But he's doing things that I wonder if he is, I don't know, questioning his his place in the game. Because it seems like he's trying to stay in the mix a little bit more than usual. You know how Kendrick Lamar goes away. When Kendrick Lamar goes away, he goes away. Kendrick ain't tripping. Kendrick goes away. And then when he yeah. comes back, he changes the climate of everything. Drake has always been the type of artist that likes to be in your face. That's why he always likes to, you know, be on features, always putting out music, whatever, whatever. But it's just little things now. Like even like, you know, jumping on Tory Lane's Instagram that, yes, Live, yeah, yeah. you know, leaking the, putting out the pic, I'm not going to say leaking, putting out the pictures of his son. Yeah. Like even the Rap Radar interview at the end of the year, which I thought was cool because it, it was him putting the cap on the decade. So that made a lot of sense for him to do an interview then, you know, but I don't know. Did you, you see know, he put he out a couple of videos image? this year? They haven't really like hit, hit. Yeah. You know, so I just, I just wonder if he is questioning his place in the game at all. Did you see him Photoshop the image of, of uh, his girl and himself? What do you mean? So there's an image that he put out of him, his kid and uh, the baby mama, right? Yeah. And there's an image she put out of all three of them. Now, she changed their hair color. She made him have blonde hair and her have blonde hair. And the kid obviously has blonde hair, right? Okay. Uh, and then he put out the same picture just without the blonde hair. She was doing like a little joke about it, right? But if you look at the images, there's Photoshopping done to Drake's baby mama. Like he makes her tits look bigger and her waist looks slimmer. And he makes himself look more muscular. 
Really? Yeah. Now, I don't know if he approves of every image before it goes out. Maybe he's got one of these guys that he sends something to and he makes the image look as, as good as it possibly can be. But if you compare the images side by side, someone's Photoshopping. Either she's I didn't, Photoshopping. I didn't pay that no attention. Him. Say again? I didn't even pay that no attention. No, it was brought up. We were talking about it on Flagrant, on Flagrant 2. Okay. And, um, and we were just comparing them. It's like, what a weird thing, right? Like, why Photoshop muscles onto yourself? Like, I understand when girls do that filter shit, but, like, to make yourself look more swole in a sweatshirt? That's weird, I, be, I, I promise you, I didn't even notice. I, cause I, to be honest with you, I just scrolled past the picture because I just, I just didn't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was almost like, I actually said to myself, I said, damn, why would he open himself up to this? You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, so you think like he's you, using it as, like, he's monetizing it? Nah, well, he's he could be, he could be getting in front of, bugs? getting ahead of something. Somebody else might have had the pictures and... You know, to avoid somebody else selling them to some tabloid or something, he might have he might have done that. Who knows? Yeah. You know, I just I just want to tell Drake, like, yo, your position in the game is solidified. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you are, you are, you are, you are a legend. You know, you're Drake. Like, yeah. you're 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 good. All you, you're playing for the legacy at this point. And if I was him, I lean more into the TV stuff now. You got Euphoria. You got Top Boy. Like, yeah. It's 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 much bigger than music with 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 Drake at this point. So that's that's all I want to say. Let's do some asking idiot man because I got to get on a fucking conference call. Sounds good. Where the asking idiot at, Taylor gang? Taylor, you can walk back in the room. Oh, they're in there. They're in the. We have to keep going down. Okay. First of all, don't talk to me like that. I know you're lonely and shit, but don't tell me to keep going down. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you, Taylor? I'm a, you know what? I will. Yo, what? You said what? You're... That's disgusting. At a time like this, you do not know who that man been in contact with. Could you please? Could you please leave that man's house so he can get back to his fucking family, Taylor? Jesus Christ! All right, uh, ask an idiot. At JP Fatuni says, "What is the one thing a person you would give up if it meant you could never catch corona?" The one thing or person I would give you up. Would give up. So I would never catch Corona. I'd give up Chris Moreau. Yeah, well, God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm keeping my guy, Chris. Man. Why would I'll you want to give up Chris? I'll just fuck with you, Chris. He probably brought it into the country. <laughs> Notice that Chris did go on vacation and immediately afterwards we had a fucking global pandemic. You noticed that, right? And he knew it was coming. He knew. Oh, oh, he Took called it, it like a motherfucker. Took it serious. You know what? Call the fucking government. I think we got them all. We know the fuck. <laughs> we know this shit started. Nah, man, I'm not giving up. Like, what do you want me to give up? I'll give up fucking bread. Sure. Something like that. But I'm not giving up any people I love or any people I work with or anything like that. Nah. If we got to get Corona, we got to get Corona. That's how it works. Yeah, I'm pretty cool on it. I'll tell you, I, I, yeah, I, I can't think of nothing I would give up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if Corona was like some super fatal disease, if the mortality rate was like through the roof, then would you different. give up, Chris? That's different. Then would you give um, up, Chris, though? Well, uh, at Wave and Dingo, asking idiot. What'd you say? Oh, I didn't hear what you said. What'd you say? What'd you oh, say? I said, then would you give up, Chris? If the mortality rate was high? <laughs> nah, I got some people I'd get rid of before Chris. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Paige. Uh, wa wave sorry, sorry Paige, you gotta go. <laughs> nah, I keep Paige. Paige, I keep Paige. <laughs> All right, go. Depends how fatal for Paige, though. Like, it. I'm just playing. I love Paige. Uh, wave and Dingo says, how would you spend your stimulus check? Um, Wave and Dingle, I'm going to be honest with you. Charlemagne and I are not getting stimulus checks. Nah. I'm glad you think we are, though. Yeah, that's, that means that we're, hey, we, that means that we we're still people, seeing eye to bro. eye with the people, baby. You know what I'm saying? We better the people <laughs> out here, bro. Just talk to us. <laughs> Wave would say he would get really good headphones so he wouldn't have to hear his girl complaining. That's good. Oh, this is a good one. Um, at Candace Syro, we're doing Ask an Idiot says, what is something new that you guys have learned during this quarantine? Hmm. Oh, um, uh, I learned how to make an old fashioned, the drink. Ooh. Yeah. I've been trying to learn new shit. Me and my girl have been doing stuff and we try to like theme nights around the food. So like 
If we're having Italian, we're going to Italy, baby. The wine's got to be Italian. We'll cook up some spaghetti and meatballs, everything through it. You know, we're locked in the house, but we can be outside the house in our experiences. So, yeah, we learned how to make an old fashioned. That was pretty cool. Yeah, Kanda, I haven't learned anything yet. I'm still learning, but I promise you when um when 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 God reveals to me what it is I'm supposed to get out of this situation, I shall share. Uh at rest poser posing egg uh says, which is a better motivator? Praise or criticism? For me, it's definitely criticism. Mm. I need critique. I need people to doubt me. I need people to speak out against me. I need it. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a, it is a motivator like a motherfucker. I am Noah building this goddamn ark. Okay. And when I'm telling people it's raining and they telling me I'm out of my fucking mind, when it starts to rain, when the rain comes, I don't got to say nothing. I just close the motherfucking ark door. And let them fucking drown. Yeah. So yes, I need criticism. I have performed better with people telling me that I ain't going to be shit, that I'm not going to do shit, that this not going to work, that this ain't work. I perform better with the criticism. Um, praise to me. It's just cool. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, and, 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 I, and it's weird because I always say that I fall in between what my dad tells me. My dad used to always say, you're never as good as they say you are. You're never as bad as they say you are. And so I kind of subscribe to that. So when it comes to the praise, it's just like, thank you. Because when people say they give you praise, you're not really giving me praise. You're giving all glory to my creator. You know what I'm saying? I just say thank you. But when it comes to criticism, criticism to me is an insult because when you critique me, you're kind of slapping my creator in the face. You're telling my creator that my creator doesn't know what they're doing. Mm. That they didn't put me in this position for a reason. Mm. Whether it's so-called wins or whether it's so-called loses, it doesn't matter. I'm in that position right. because my God wanted me to be in that position. Right. So when you insult me or mm. critique that, you insulting my God. That's why I take it so personal. Now me and my God got to prove you wrong and make it rain. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think I would agree. Adversity introduces a man to himself. So I think you get more out of adversity, though I think praise is important. And I think, uh, I think, I think I I believe in myself, so I don't need praise, but praise is nice because it confirms that belief. You know, like if you're one of those people who believes in it, you know, who believes in themselves also crazy people, they believe in themselves, you know, homeless people, they believe in themselves when they hear those fucking voices, they believe in themselves. So it's like, it's nice when that belief that you have is also validated. I wouldn't deny that, you know? So yeah, a hundred percent. I think I need a balance of both. What else? Um, I think that's it, man. My man. I, I got to get on this conference call. You do your thing, bro. Hey, yeah. let, let the people Y'all be know, safe man. out there. Everybody remain healthy. Trust me, we're going to get through this. All our brilliant idiots tribe, man. This is, this is just another chapter in this book called Life. Always remember what your Uncle Charlotte says. I don't believe in good or bad experiences. I just believe that all of this is part of one long process. And I think that this is a great process that we're going through because I feel like the world is going to be totally different. Once we come out on the other side of this, I really feel like, you know, God is showing us what truly matters mm. in this moment. And really what matters, man, is what has always mattered and what people have always screamed matters. And that's just having empathy for people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's just looking out for your fellow man, not thinking you're better than anybody. Like there is no supremacy. There is no superiority because just like this, Boom. God can put everybody in the same fucking arc. 100%. That's it. 100%. So, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace. Peace, y'all. Peace.